HD broadcast is brought to you by Argent Mortgage. Ask your mortgage broker about Argent or log on to ArgentLoans.com. War Eagle, fly down the field. Ever to conquer, never to yield. War Eagle, feelings are true. Fight on the orange and blue. Go, go, go. I told you always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Seize the moment. That is what I had to do a decade ago with the weight of a volunteer nation on my shoulders. Manning back to throw, looking into the end zone for the post round. Touchdown, Big Orange! An SEC championship, four consecutive bowl bids, and the Heisman Trophy later. We help restore the glory to Auburn football. Now, in their final SEC game of their career, three Tiger seniors, all in the same backfield, quarterback, Jason Campbell. Here's Campbell, goes deep in the end zone. Go! It's down! And running backs, Ronnie H2 Brown. Ronnie Brown, touchdown! And Cadillac Williams. To Williams, walks in! All return for one more run at the title. This is the SEC Championship. The champion for 1997, the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Where age doesn't define the player, but where a player can be defined for the ages. Kick on the way, the kick is long and high. Good! For these three seniors, friends and teammates, their moment in time has arrived. A time to seize the moment. Welcome you to the SEC Championship, presented by Dr. Pepper. From the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, second meeting of the season, the undefeated Auburn Tigers, their head coach, Tommy Tuberville. The twice defeated Tennessee Volunteers, their head coach, Philip Fulmer. Smokey's ready. Fans are as well. Peyton Manning and Bo Jackson obviously are, though neither can sing. It's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. We'll return to the Georgia Dome right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Sonic, Miller High Life, and by Pontiac. That was then, and this is now 34-10 in the first game between these two teams back in October. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, along with Tracy Wolfson. We welcome you to Atlanta. Todd, how tough for one team to beat another twice in the same year. Well, I go against what a lot of people think. I think if you beat a team convincingly in their stadium, you have a little mental edge, and I think Auburn has that. But what Auburn has to do in the game tonight, they've got to come in and be focused, but they also have to play loose. They've won 11 games this year by having an aggressive, let it rip attitude. The other thing they've got to do, they've got to make Tennessee defend the whole field. Their offensive balance is what's made them special this year, whether it's Jason Campbell throwing or Ronnie Brown and Carnell. William 
teams running it, they've got to make Tennessee defend everything. Now, when you turn it over and talk about Tennessee, what do they have to do? Six turnovers when they played before. They must protect the football. That is quarterback Rick Clausen's number one job tonight. But most importantly for Tennessee, their defense must be stout early. Keep an eye on defensive tackle Jesse Mahalona because he sets the tempo for the volunteer defense. Auburn leads the series 24, 21, and 3. 34 to 10 Tigers in the first meeting. The last time, the only time they have met in the Georgia Dome. Tennessee won the championship 30 to 29. Tennessee won the toss. They have elected to defer the option to the second half. That means they will kick off in the form of James Wilhoyt. You see 25 touchbacks and 61 kicks. Carnell Williams to the left. Devin Aromashadu is to the right. Auburn excels in special teams play. Tennessee has been abysmal. Here's the kick. This is a good one. Nice start. And Cadillac Williams, a bit surprisingly, decides to bring it out. And he is dropped inside the 15-yard line. Ben Green made the tackle. Well, one of the first things I said, you must not be tentative. Play aggressive. Carnell Williams, a little hesitation on the return. We know he's a great returner, but a little hesitation causes Auburn to start inside their own 20 the first time with the football. Ben Green with the tackle. Jason Campbell is the quarterback, the senior from Taylorsville, Mississippi. He has had all-time leader in career victories. It would be his 30th breaking a tie that he currently holds with Stan White. And I think the biggest difference in Jason Campbell this year is not anything physically. He's always been gifted physically, but he has played this year not afraid to make mistakes, and that's been all the difference in the world, his confidence level. You notice they've scored on 8 of 11 drives. They've only punted once on their first drive of the ball game. Here's Campbell going deep. Courtney Taylor wide open. Blown coverage. He's still loose. Tennessee secondary very, very suspect. And we see it right off the bat. 56 yards. Well, they went play action right away. Tennessee probably thinking run right away. This is Courtney Taylor, and they're going to just cross him. It's not a complicated route, but nobody stays with Courtney Taylor. They have him on the short route, and then when he turns him over, there's nobody deep. And Jason Campbell finds the right guy, and just like that, Auburn with another big play. They'll go from the shotgun with a first down at the 30-yard line. Campbell five yards back. There's a play fake, and Campbell will run. He doesn't do this a lot, but he does it effectively. Well, and I was at practice Wednesday, and Tommy Tupperville said, we are going to run more with Jason tonight. And let's check the starting lineup. Presented by Dr. Pepper. I'd write a book, I think. Probably will. Yeah. Second down and four. Jake Slaughter's in as the fullback. Here's play, Kate, play fake, and he's got a man wide open. It's Wallace, the tight end. Oh, Inside the five. Cooper Wallace. Don't use him often, but they use him effectively. Well, the scary thing for Tennessee is Auburn has thrown two passes, and in both cases, the wide receiver has been wide open. Now, this is Cooper Wallace here. It's just a crossing route off the bootleg. You've got to respect the run fake. You've got to respect Ronnie and Carnell. That gets the linebackers going. Kevin Burnett out of position, and Cooper Wallace, the tight end, crosses right behind him for the completion. First and goal at the three. Slaughter the fullback. Cadillac Williams is the tailback. Here's the handoff. Lead blocked by Slaughter. Williams to the one. Struggling. Fumbles in the end zone. It's loose and recovered. Cole Bennett got it. Cole backup Bennett, the backup end. tight end. Touchdown, Auburn. Just about to say this has been way too easy for Auburn because it looked like Carnell was going to kind of knife his way into the end zone, but he lost the ball, but Auburn still gets the touchdown. John Vaughn on for the extra point. He's missed once this year. Not this time.
Darnell Williams, very good on the goal line. The hit by Jonathan Wade knocked the ball loose, and then Cole Bennett alertly, not the first guy to get to it, but the guy that secured the football in the end zone. A couple different players had a shot at it. Cole Bennett will be able to tell his grandkids, I scored a touchdown in the SEC championship game a long time ago. The Auburn Tigers have now scored on 9 of 12 first possessions. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. 7 0. Four plays, 86 yards. That is the fastest score in SEC championship history. Cole Bennett got it. With a fumble recovery after Cadillac Williams was hit and dropped the ball. Philip Yost will kick off. Gerald Riggs is back to return it. Mention how abysmal special teams have been for Tennessee. They rank 103rd of 117 teams in Division I in kickoff returns. And uh, it's a moot point on this one as Yost drives it 10 yards deep. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, let's take a look where Cole Bennett was. Here he is right here. He's the backside tight end. The play is going the other way. They actually had a defensive tack or offensive tackle playing tight end on the other side. Jonathan Wade comes in with a good hit right on the football. Carnell Williams was not ready for that hit. And Cole Bennett comes up with a touchdown. Watch Jonathan Wade. And Carnell normally knows where everybody's coming from. Had no idea where Jonathan Wade was coming from. Put the shoulder right on the football. And Cole Bennett came up with a touchdown. Now, Rick Clawson, the junior from Thousand Oaks, California, and a quarterback. He hands it off to second man through that Cedric Houston. Good run. Good first play for Tennessee. Well, Rick Clawson started his career. He's Casey Clawson's youngest, younger brother. Started his career at LSU, transferred, sat out last season, began this year as the number three quarterback. Injuries to Eric Ainge, Brent Schaefer, they are out. And Clawson is getting a start in his third game. He played very, very well last week yes, in the win over Kentucky. And he's gotten better the more that he's played. And, and what he gives Tennessee is a little more maturity and ability to do things at the line. Houston forced back inside. Travis Williams made it after Jay Ratliff forced it. That's a loss of three. The one thing about this Auburn defense, they're not one of the bigger defenses you'll see, but they're play, and they get you in third down, and that is where they uh, have been outstanding. Lead the country in scoring defense, and they're top ten in three other categories. Not bad, huh? No. <laughs> third and six. Here's Clawson back to throw. Blitz coming. He fires it. It's dropped. A little behind the senior Tony Brown, but uh, that's a should have had. Well, it was pretty good protection, and I think Rick Clawson may have hurried that one just a little bit. He had a little better protection than maybe he thought he was going to get on this first third down play. He threw it a little too soon, and it was behind Tony Brown. But again, when you're the underdog like Tennessee, you've got to come up with as many of those plays as you can. Three and out in this one. Here's Dustin Colquitt. And that is not his best effort. He's not having a great season. He was an All-American a year ago. And here's Cadillac Williams back to return the punt. And he doesn't get anywhere. 44-yard punt for Colquitt. One yard on the return. But three and out yeah. for Tennessee, just as they went three and out in game one in October. And big plays did them in then. Two huge plays have given Auburn a seven-zip lead. Seven nothing. Auburn can't control the polls, but they can control what kind of legacy they leave. A win today, and these Tigers could become the first in school history to go 12 and 0 on the season. A victory will also give them their first SEC championship game win and their first SEC title in 15 years. Head coach Tommy Tuberville put it like this: He said, "To get to Atlanta and win here is our number one goal. Only us as coaches and players know how hard it is to do what we have done so far. To finish it off is one of the hardest things in." sports he said you just have to go out and do it back to you Brian. all right Tracy seven nothing here ball on the 34 second Auburn possession Cadillac Williams in the backfield Ronnie Brown number 23 lines up and a wing to the left here's the handoff to Cadillac Williams gets across the 35 and out to the 38 yard line that's a gain of four well Auburn in the battle for BCS championship game standings, USC and Oklahoma have been 1-2 in everything all season long, and they were 1-2 and when the BCS polls first came out. Auburn trying to vault over one or the other. And USC playing 
Crosstown rival UCLA tonight in a bit of a tussle, 17 to 10 right now in that ball game. Second down and six. And again, Campbell out of the spread. Four-man rush for Tennessee, a little inside shovel. Here's Ronnie Brown. Zips across the 50, down to the 49. A quick gain of 13 for number 23. Well, what we're seeing is we're seeing, and, and Auburn is very two-dimensional in their offense this season. First and 10 after the gain of 13. That is the third play in excess of 10 yards already. Play fake. Campbell, under pressure, has a relief man. And there's Ben Obamanu. Nobody around him. And Obamanu is belted out of bounds, and there's a little join going on. That's a gain of 16. That is the fourth play. Over 10 yards already. And I'm a little bit surprised, not because of Auburn, but because of Tennessee's defense. John Chavis told us over and over, when we played them the first time, as we take a look at Obamanu coming as an underneath route, an outlet receiver, and Jason Campbell found him, but John Chavis said, hey, look, when we played them in October, they had five plays in the first half that accounted for 188 yards. Other than that, we played pretty well. Well, now we're barely into this game. And as you mentioned, already four plays over 10 yards, all of them passes. Campbell has completed four for 106. And off to Cadillac Williams. Goes left. Jules the defender. That was Jonathan Wade. There's some laundry on the ground. Yes, indeed. No chance. And a first down at the 20-yard line. Whistle before the snap. Well, this uh, Tennessee defense that's introduced them to you before changes are made. <laughs> Defensive line, Peros Harrelson, Turk McBride, Jesse Mahalona, and Carlton Neal. The linebackers, Omar Gaither, Jason Mitchell, Kevin Burnett, the senior. And the secondary, which has been a problem. Rashawn Fellows, Jason Allen's had a great year. Corey Campbell, Jonathan Hefney. And here is John Chavis, the defensive coordinator. Long-time assistant coach at his alma mater, Tennessee. And I'll tell you, it's been a tough year for him because, uh, you know, you mentioned Jason Allen. He has had a great year in terms of tackling, but they're last in the SEC in pass defense. Way too many big plays they've given up. Here's a pass. It's caught by Ronnie Brown, and a good job defensively will limit that after the... Uh, after the penalty was walked off against Auburn, it was a false start penalty, and that tackle made by Turk McBride. You know, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show how important it was for Tennessee to play well defensively early. Auburn has outscored their opponents in the first half 194 to 32, and the only two teams that have hung around in the fourth quarter, LSU and Alabama, against this Auburn team, did it because their defense played well early and really took the game to Auburn. Second down and 15 now. Campbell, play action again, looks deep. He'll scramble, gets a nice block, finds a man open, it's Ronnie Brown. That's he got a terrific block from Ben Grubbs. Yeah, that's pretty good downfield defense that time by Tennessee, forcing Jason Campbell to go underneath. It was second down and long. And Auburn tried to flood the field. They tried to get three receivers over on the same side of the field, and Jason Campbell was forced to take the shortest alternative. Now take a look at the first quarter dominance by Auburn. 116 to 12. Second quarter. I mean, the only quarter that's even resembled anything close is number four. Yeah, and that's when all their starters are out. Right. Third and five. Auburn loads up the left side. Mix is the middle of three. Here's Campbell. Half roll, fires it. It's caught by Obamanu. He appears to have a first down. He is belted by Jason Allen. But I think Obamanu had enough to give Auburn a first and goal. Jason Allen, who told us yesterday, I am so excited. I have never played in the championship game at any level. Well, he better strap it up because Auburn's coming. Here's Obamanu. This is like a little pick play. These guys go in, he goes out, and no defender is able to get out there with Obamanu. See, defenses call that a pick. Offensive players call that a rub play. Now, however you interpret it, it's a first down for Auburn. Must be a rug because yeah. picks are illegal. And no, the yellow flags were on the on the field. First down and goal. Just and the play clock down to five. Motion. 
Three point. Now there is a flag on the far side. They'll probably be offsides on Tennessee. Yep, they so it is a free play. play. So looks like Jason Hall might have jumped. One other thing to keep in mind about this ball game: Tennessee played last week and had to fight to the very end. They scored the winning touchdown with 12 seconds left to beat Kentucky, 37 to 31. Auburn had the week off. This is a more rested football team and defense. a healthier football team than Tennessee snap. right now. First down. This is Steve Landis who is refereeing his final game tonight. He's decided to call it a career as a referee in the Southeastern Conference. And after the penalty is marked off, it's first and goal from just inside the five. This has been all Auburn all the time. Cadillac Williams is the deep back. Campbell under Jeremy Ingle. Play fake. Campbell comes right. Looks. Nobody open. Good pressure. He throws it away. Good defense and a good decision by Jason Campbell. Paris Harrelson, number 98. And Campbell and Harrelson will have a little chat. You don't see Jason talk too much. Now, those are both Mississippi guys. Paris Harrelson's from Flora, Mississippi. Jason Campbell from Taylorsville, Mississippi. And it's a clean hit and a good to see. Well, there is a hand up in the face mask, but Steve Landis was on the back side of it. Maybe couldn't see that. Paris Harrelson, first name is spelled P-A-R-Y-S. We chatted with him in midseason. said, why isn't it just P-A-R-I-S? He said, let me call my mom and find out. <laughs> that was he cool. called his mother while we were meeting with him. She said, Paris with a Y sounds more masculine. Yeah. That was a great moment. Second down and goal. Toss left. Cadillac. Belton. Touchdown. Auburn. They're up by 13. Great game with a rushing touchdown. That is a new Auburn Tiger record. As a senior at Ottawa High School in Atala, Alabama, Cadillac Williams agreed to attend Tennessee. Tennessee, Tommy Tuberville took five of his assistants, went to Cadillac's home and said, could we talk? He agreed to make an official visit to Auburn. Here's the kick. And this will be Riggs at the goal line. Riggs across the 20 and out to the 23-yard line. And Sherry Jackson, we were mentioning, she's from uh, Atala, Alabama. On the front, 24 on the other side, and 17 on the sleeves. Really, trust me on this. She truly does. Well, that's quite a backfield. She's well represented because those three young men have played at an All-American level this year. And may all three end up being first-round draft picks in the NFL next spring. First and ten, Tennessee. Three and out the first time. They're down by 14. Hand off, Cedric Houston, number 21, spilled at the 25. I want to go back to the touchdown because it's an Allen again. And one of the signature plays of game one was Jason Allen being rocked back on his heels by Ronnie Brown. Second down. Here's the change. Rick Clawson. Into the left side. It's caught by Tony Brown. Nice open field job. Monta well, this is where Auburn has been really tough. When they get you in third and seven plus, they are very difficult to convert on. Auburn brings four. Backside. Passes the left side. It's tipped away by Carlos. Rodgers, the All-American, never been completed in front of Carlos Rodgers. He's been thrown at only 63 times now, including that last pass. And they're trying to bait Dustin Colquitt to raise up and throw the football here. They moved on the coverage. Oh, boy, it looks like they were coming. There is contact, and there is no flag. And a fair catch called by Parnell Williams at the 35-yard line. I love the aggressiveness of Auburn's football team. They've been aggressive on offense, they've been aggressive on defense, and going after the punter, aggressive on special teams. They know they're the better team coming in, and they're playing like it so far. Now for the Home Depot coach's decision. It's called Let's Go Deep on the first play. Yeah, good call by Al Borges, but we've got a... He's pretty ugly. <laughs> okay. 
Two possessions, two touchdowns. Here's Silas Daniels, number 85, who uh, starts in motion, then sets up. There's the handoff. No, play action. Campbell, he wants to go deep for Silas Daniels. Goes short and stab. Aroma Shadu with Omar Gaither in the neighborhood. Cannot hang on. And, and Tennessee looked a little more settled down on that play. Again, very aggressive call. Good play fake, but Tennessee in position. Omar Gaither was in position enough to disrupt that throw and catch to Aroma Shadu. But if you look at what's happened so far, total domination by Auburn. And the last two times these teams have played, last year in Auburn and in October in Knoxville, the same thing has happened. Auburn has jumped on them right away and buried them early in the football game. Second and 10 now with a 14-0 lead. The ball at the 35. Campbell, Williams. And it'll be the first third and long. And for an injury update, let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. You're not seeing Tennessee free safety Jason Allen in the game right now. He has a severe laceration on his right elbow. He's been taken to the locker room. They're the Cadillac Williams rolled him over yeah. on the touchdown run. And that's a key loss because they're already hurting at the safety position. That has been one of their real weak points, the strong safety position. Jason Allen, their leading tackler by far. Third and ten, Tennessee will go with three men down. Mahalona just uh, hurried off at a defensive tackle spot. Here's Engel checking. Snaps it back. They rush five. Campbell across the middle. The catch is made by Ronnie Brown, but it will force the first yeah. Auburn punt of the evening. And, and that was a good defensive call by John Chavis to go after Jason Campbell, even though it was third and long, try to make him throw short. And that's what they got. They got pressure. They brought extra people. They knocked Jason Campbell down. And they forced him to throw underneath, and then they made the tackle short of the first down. Good rush, good coverage, and a punt for Auburn. Brings on Cody Bliss. You think he's gotten tired? I don't believe so. Eight times in the last eight games. And this one, well, maybe looks he like, is tired, yeah. Well, it looks like he's only punted a few times. That was pretty poor. My friend Pat Hayden would now say, thank you very much. Yes, he would. <laughs> very appropriately. 15-yard <laughs> punt. 1-5. Uh, At the conclusion of tonight's game. Go to Field position now for Tennessee. And I, I think Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, he's got to be a little aggressive. The best time, I think, to throw on Auburn is off of play action on early downs and try to get a big chunky yardage, maybe even try to get Robert Meacham involved in the game number three. He's their big play receiver. High formation on first and ten. Best field position by far. Here's Clawson going deep right side. They go at Montavis Pitts, and he can't hang on. Chris Hannon had Pitts beaten, had both hands on the football, and it goes in complete. And I'll say it again. When you are the underdog team coming in, you have got to make these plays. A great call by Randy Sanders. A great throw by Rick Clawson. And Chris Hannon has to come up with that catch. He gets both hands on it. Yes, it was a dive. Yes, it made it tough. But if you want to be in this kind of a game, you've got to make those plays. Randy Sanders, who was a quarterback at Tennessee in the mid-80s, offensive coordinator, has worked with three quarterbacks now and a patched-up offensive line. He's had a good year as the offensive coordinator. Here's Clawson. Sings this one out to Jason Swain, and it's too high, and Montavis Pitts comes up, and he'll do a little chatting. Well, Schaefer and Ainge were declared co-starters by Philip Fulmer back in August. Brent Schaefer was the first to go down. That happened a separate game. game. Clawson came on through a costly interception to Mike Goolsby that turned out to be the game-winning points in that uh, loss to Notre Dame. Here's Clawson. Zings it left side. Corey Anderson. No, thank you. Stanley McClover, who may be <laughs> the mount. Cole Quinn is on the punt. Carnell Williams this time has uh, camped at the 10-yard line. And Cole needs to punt like an All-American for Tennessee tonight. I, I know he's had a tough year, but they need him to be strong tonight. This one's sky high. And a fair catch called by Cadillac Williams and taken at the 17-yard line. Well, he is averaging, uh, Colquitt, 41.4 this season of the kicking Colquitt family, and that's not uh, good by his standards. Tuesday on NCIS, Central on CBS, America's most watched network. 
14-0, latter stages, opening quarter. Two touchdowns, a fumble recovery in the end zone by Cole Bennett, the Cadillac Williams fumble at the one, and then Williams with a touchdown on the ground. Here's Ronnie Brown, and he's belted. So that's about four yep. good defensive plays. You're right. Plays. They, they've settled down a little bit. And uh, it looked like they were going to get run out of the building on the first couple possessions, but the last four or five plays, John Chavis' defense has settled down a little bit. Now the key is, if they're, if they're solid against the run, they can't give up more big plays in that passing game. They've got to find a way to cover the receivers closer and get a little more pressure on Jason Campbell. It's one thing to, to play well against the run, but then when you give up big chunks of yardage with passing plays, it really negates what you do up front. On second and ten, spread formation, Ronnie Brown goes wide to the left where he'll uh, stop. Here's Campbell, comes back to the right, underneath, Obamanu, nifty play. Bad tackling, nifty running, bad tackling by Tennessee. Poor, that in a conference call with us on Tuesday, he asked if you had any eligibility left and if you'd like to play on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. He asked me, but I don't he think he was really serious. desperate, I think, <laughs> for both of us. Yes. Third and short. Quarterback sneak Campbell. Let's see where the spot on one. This has been a magical ride for Tommy Tuberville and the Auburn Tigers. Now the play clock down at 2-1. I don't think they got it, did they? Apparently so. Here's Campbell, fires it. Obamanu up at the 35-yard line. Now let's go back to the studio for a past year, and I think there was a lot of sentiment coming into this year that USC was the team that got left out last year, and that's not going to happen this year. Here's Campbell setting up a screen pass right side, incomplete. Well, the other factor that we've discussed a couple of times, I, and I bear, here's Campbell holding his left foot He's a little slow getting up. Jesse Mahalona got to him. Jesse Mahalona has had a couple off weeks. But I expected him to come out and play well today, and he, he looks better. You see him, uh, it's, a, it's a low tackle, nothing dirty by Mahalona, just that's where he ended up getting Jason Campbell as he released the football. But Mahalona played the last couple of weeks with a very heavy heart. He lost uh, an uncle that was very close to him out in Hawaii and contemplated going back home and has uh, worked his way through that and looks a lot better tonight. Third and eight. There's Campbell. He gets back, gets a good block, and finds a man. There's a flag back at the 21-yard line. This is either going to be holding or roughing. Steve Landis. Holding. Yeah. In those two polls over this weekend. Oh, bad snap. Cody Bliss loses it, and the Tennessee Volunteers will have the ball at the 14-yard line. I don't think the snap was no, that high. Was he just slipped it. It was high, but he's got to be able to catch that. Now, with the first time out there, he shanked the punt, and that's what Tommy Tuberville is saying is, hey, our special teams have been a strength all year, and you're two times out on the field, it's been a weakness. The shank, a high snap, but he's got to catch that one. And Tennessee, who is struggling to find a break in this game, just found one. 15-yard punt for Bliss, and then a bobble, and Eddie Grand, the special teams coach, is in his face now. These are not going to be pleasant moments before halftime for Cody Bliss. First down at the 14. High formation for Tennessee. They hand it off to Houston. He comes left and is cut down by Travis Williams. Another look at the snap, which was just a little bit high. Well, again, Auburn special teams have been very strong this year. Eddie Grand, the special teams coach. Tommy Tuberville a, spends a lot of time with special teams. And on that team, the punt team, they have eight of their starters because that particular part of the special teams can affect field position so much with big returns or block kicks but you expect your punter to catch the snap Meacham split to the left this is Corey Anderson in motion wide to the left and here's Clawson back to throw across the middle caught by Houston darts left and that should be a first and yeah. goal Tennessee nice job by Rick Clawson not panicking and going to a secondary receiver who was his outlet in Cedric Houston 
That's the one thing that Rick Clawson, I think, has done since he's come in. He doesn't throw the ball as well as Eric Ainge. He doesn't run the ball nearly as well as Brent Schaefer, but he understands the game. He had an older brother that was an excellent quarterback here in Casey Clawson, and he knows what to do with the football. Tennessee has not been effective in the red zone, what they call the orange zone this year. First and goal, handoff Houston, goes right, gets one, down to the two. Matter of fact, the, the Clawson family, Casey Clawson is here. He uh, was the losing quarterback in Tennessee's loss to LSU here in 2001. He's uh, going to play in the NFL Deve Developmental League in Europe uh, this spring. His sister, Katie, to his right, she's a freshman at Tennessee, and the younger brother, Jimmy, is a sophomore at Oaks Christian. He's thrown for 51 touchdowns at Thousand Oaks, California. They've got a game tonight in the state semifinals. Handoff up the middle, up uh, over the top. Yep. Touchdown, Tennessee. Yep. Flag yep. on the far side. There is a flag down, but I think it's offsides on Auburn. I, I think there was movement on the... The left side of the Auburn line, and I think the touchdown will stand for Tennessee. Number four, defense within the neutral Junior Rosegreen is the guy that's been identified by Steve Landis. He was blitzing from the top of the formation. And credit Cedric Houston for staying with it and getting it in the end zone. And that's only the second rushing touchdown that Auburn has given up the entire season. That's right. The only other team to score on the ground against the Tigers of all people, Kentucky. And that was back in October. They had given up one rushing touchdown in 53 quarters until that score. Well, the blitz was coming from the outside. You see Rose Green clearly over the line of scrimmage. Cedric Houston, Houston up and over the top. And the only way you can go up and over is if you get a push on the inside. And Casey Clawson and his dad, Jim, know that's a great way to get back in his football game. Touchdown set up by the botched punt. That's the end of number one. We'll return to the Georgia Dome after this message and a word from your local station. You can walk like I do and talk like me too. Here's Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wilson in the 2004 SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper and uh, Cody Bliss spending uh, some moments in agony yeah. on that sideline. And that's the defensive line coach, Don Dunn, that was uh, shaking his head there saying, hey, we still believe in you, but don't put our defense in a hole like that anymore. You know, that's it. <laughs> Tennessee was struggling to get in this game, and uh, boy, they found a way to do it on the special teams right there. James Wilhoyt will kick off. Cadillac Williams and Devin Aroma should do are the deep man. Here's Will Hoyt. He of the 51 yard field goal that won the game over Florida all the way back in September. He nails this one. It goes out of the end zone. It will come back to the 20 yard line and the Auburn Tigers will get it again with their lead now shaved to 14 to 7. Todd you had a sense uh, from what we were seeing in the first quarter the only way Tennessee was going to get back right. in the game was a break and they got a big one. Well they got a break from the special teams but remember this now I think it was set up because after those first two touchdowns the Tennessee defense started to settle down a little bit. They forced two punts. They got a short punt the first time. They got a fumbled snap the second time. So the defense geared it up a little bit. They got the big turnover and the offense even though they've only gained 22 yards they got them right back in the game. Well Auburn gets it first down. At the 20 yard line, Jason Campbell with his backs in the eye. Jake Slaughter, the fullback, leans up to make sure he's got the count and the play, and then leads the play left side. There's a flag in the near side of the field. Mahalona made the tackle. And a little conversation here with the uh, officiating crew. I mentioned that Jesse Mahalona suffered the loss of an uncle, his uncle Moses, who was uh, a musical performer in Hawaii, 45 years old, died uh, rather tragically suddenly. And uh, it was very difficult for Jesse. He felt very alone and far away from home and family. And uh, 
but he has really kind of worked his way through it and he's having a pretty good ball game here tonight and he I think he sets the tempo for this entire Tennessee defense they feed off of his ability to be disruptive on the inside oh, you saw the graphic he had no tackles against Vanderbilt did get three against Kentucky and that penalty against Auburn it's first and 15 here's Campbell right side man wide open again Boy, the secondary has not played well. No, too much cushion. Goodness that, sakes. Outside, and that was an easy throw for Jason Campbell. Now look at the stats for Campbell. Already 169 yards, and he's hit 12 of 15. And here is a fake going reverse. Deep. Going They're deep. going deep for Aroma Shadu, but he's well covered. And Campbell can run. Yeah. He gets a block from Ronnie Brown. Campbell's got 4-5 speed. Well, 203 yards offense attributed to Jason Campbell. First down and 10. Backs are in the eye. Here's Ronnie Brown. Darts to the outside, then cuts it back to the 27-yard line. Tennessee team with 12 yards rushing yards thus far. Campbell with 35. Daniels goes in motion to the right side. Here's a fake toss. Good block on the outside. Campbell will tuck it and run, and he gets inside the 25 to the 24. Tony Mc... Anthony Mix was able to walk off with minimal assistance. He's now getting medical attention over from the doctors on that left knee. And it's third down and three, just inside the 25. Ronnie Brown is the deep back. Slaughter is in as a fullback. Here's the option play, the pitch to Brown. Slaughter with a block on Hefney. And Ronnie Brown to the 20-yard line. That's going to be close. a first down. Part of that, when they get in third and five or less, they they can run just as effectively as pass. That time they went with the option and picked up the first down without having to throw. This is Cadillac Williams, and he goes over right tackle down to the 16-yard line. Well, Tommy Tuberville said to, in our most recent conversation with him, second down and six. Total yardage, total yardage in this game, and it's a seven-point game. Auburn 222 yards, Tennessee 22 yards. Out of the shotgun, Campbell, second down. Quarterback draw by design. Here's Campbell, zips it up the middle, first and goal. Ronnie Brown, but I really think this is the best offensive line in the SEC as well. I mean, they are really a strong, physical, athletic group up in front of those talented guys in the backfield. And that's McNeil and Grubbs and Ingle, Danny Lindsay, Troy Reddick. Now Cadillac Williams on first and goal is the deep back in the eye. Ronnie Brown also there. And Omar Gaither leads the charge. Big defensive play. And Kevin Burnett is also a part of it. Kevin Burnett, who uh, earned a lot of headlines in the aftermath of the loss, 34 to 10, back at Neyland Stadium. He said, we will see them again in the SEC championship game. We were defeated tonight, but it's only because of our own mistakes. They had six turnovers in that <laughs> That's game. That's what got him more of the headlines, at least down in uh, the state of Alabama, was the fact that he insinuated or actually said that the better team didn't win right that night in October came back for his senior season two years ago missed the year with an injury now second down and goal out of the shotgun good protection Campbell right side corner incomplete now have to play. his hands all over him. I mean and that's going to be a first and goal at the six after the penalty on Hefney Tight end starts in motion, comes back to the near side. He is one of the lead blockers as they go at left tackle. Ronnie Brown, number 23, and Carlton Neal, number 46. Well, let's go back to Kevin Burnett. He's this week's scholar athlete presented by Red Lobster. Senior with a great point average of 3.63, major in sports management, and he will receive his master's degree this semester. He's an outstanding young man, does a lot of work with young boys, young fatherless boys, he told us because he lost his dad when he was seven years of age. I think he may have gotten that master. I think their semester ended this week, so I think he uh, actually has his master's degree in his back pocket right now. Second down. Throw wide open. Oh, my. Courtney Taylor. Big play. A big play fake by Jason Campbell, and again, poor coverage. 
by the Tennessee secondary. Now Tennessee thinking run. They've seen Jason Campbell run off of the same fake. This time they fake it, and he raises up and throws it and wide open in the back of the end zone. Hmm. Balance, offensive balance. They keep you on your heels. They make you defend everything, and they've got the people to execute it. John Vaughn for the extra point. Alex Howell with the hold. It is up and good. Ten plays, 80 yards. It took five minutes and 45 seconds. Bingo. They're back up by 14. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship. 1997 Tennessee versus Auburn. Peyton Manning rallied the Vols from a 20-7 deficit. An early fourth quarter touchdown pass put the Vols up 30-29. to And head coach Philip Fulmer celebrated his first SEC championship as head coach at Tennessee. Mark Harmon stars. Philip Yost will kick off. This one will be taken by Riggs. Five yards into the end zone. Touched back. Comes out to the 20. Now, well, I want to go back to the touchdown. The second down. First and 10, Tennessee. Rick Clawson. In at quarterback. Into the flat right side. It's capped by the 270-pound fullback, Corey Anderson, number 45. Well. This is the uh, the end of the regular season for us. Actually, the beginning of the and, it's, and of course the Auburn Tigers undefeated, untied right now, hoping for a chance to compete for the national championship. Something called BCS standing in the way right now. Second down. Second and five. Right side. Gerald Riggs, number 31, driven down at the 28-yard line. It'll be third down. Uh if you're looking for a little good news for Tennessee, I, th I think there is some, and that is when these teams played in October, the score at halftime was 31 to 3, and they had to completely abandon their game plan of trying to still run the football with Riggs in Houston because they turned the ball over. Well, they haven't turned the ball over, and yes, they're down, but 21 to 7 is a whole lot better than 31 to 3. And now they've got a third and short that would be very positive for them if they could find a way to convert. Tennessee will go with two tight ends. See the comparison thus far. Clawson three of eight and he's going to have to expend a timeout. Seven minutes 47 seconds to go in the first half. Auburn by 14. Auburn Tigers move the Tiger Walk 110 miles from campus into the city of Atlanta, marched in, and they have control. They lead by 14. Third and two with 7.47 to go in the first half. This is one of the tight ends, Chris Brown. A handoff of the middle, big hole. And a first down, Tennessee. Gerald Riggs picks it up to the 37-yard line. And the best run of the night for Tennessee. Before that play, seven carries, only 16 yards rushing for the Volunteers. And a lot of times in short yardage situations, you've got a lot of guys stacked by the line of scrimmage. You might be able to bust that thing out of there. Good push up front by this uh, Tennessee offensive line that's been beat up and had a lot of different combinations. Only one guy, Rob Smith, the left guard, has played in all 11 games for Tennessee. That's the longest run of the night. It was nine yards. Here's the attempt again, and this one will be no yards. You know, Cedric and Carnell Williams, look at that. We talk a lot, and, and uh, I do believe that Ronnie Brown and Carnell Williams are the best tandem, yeah. maybe in college football, but Houston and Riggs, pretty good for that Tennessee backfield. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I, you know, the biggest difference with Ronnie and Carnell is the way they've been able to use them in their passing game in a lot of different variety of formations, a little bit more so than the, the two backs from Tennessee. Boston looks over at Randy Sanders. There's the change. He's a pretty cool customer. I mean, this, this situation doesn't bother him too much. Quick read, right side. Oh, boy, Carlos Rogers who thought about going to the NFL and decided to return in hopes of being part of a special season. Third and long again, right into the hands of this Auburn defense. They stunt. Here's the pass behind the intended receiver, C.J. Faton. It'll be fourth down. And here's Colquitt. In Tennessee in punt situation, but if you go back to that third down play, now Auburn's going to come with a stunt and pressure from the outside, but Tennessee's going to pick it up. The two linemen in the back, 
they read the blitz they're going to pick it up and this is a play where Rick Clawson just has to take a good drop and make an accurate throw because if he hits Phaeton with that ball Phaeton falls down and picks up the first down it was third down and nine and they had the protection the quarterback has to be able to make that throw so on fourth down Carnell Williams with punt return yardage in excess of 58 <laughs> Other score. This is a great hang. Oh, great hang boy. Time in. Way up. Oh. That's excellent. Carnell Williams, no fair catch. And he is down at the 12 yard line, a 50 yard punt, and two on the return. Well, Cadillac loves to return punts because he thinks he can make something happen. A little shaken up at the end of that return. That's his mother, Sherry Jackson. That's Very keyed in on him as a punt returner. That, that's one area that I think they've been pretty solid in tonight is their covering of the punts. A couple good kicks by Colquitt and good coverage downfield by the Tennessee punt team. And there's a Tennessee guy down is right here. It's more the shoulder pads of Daniel Brooks and uh, Carnell's head kind of got bent forward. He's up, and Daniel Brooks is still being looked at. And a prayer being said by members of the Auburn team. This is reminiscent of Junior Rose Green and Reggie Brown two weeks ago. Will someone please explain to me why nobody grills in the winter? I mean, think about it. Did the caveman stop cooking meat over the fire at the first sign of a snowflake? Look, pal, just because it gets a little nippy doesn't mean the world stops turning. Nope. I say when the going gets cold, the cold get grilling. So pull up your wool skirt and throw down some plump grill master dogs. And remember to look at the bright side. You don't need to buy ice for the beer. Ballpark Grill Master Franks. Be big, be meaty, be frank. Investing your money. Janice tracks down company. Zippe, our production manager, Joe Alvarado, our technical manager, Al Fong. The studio. Janice walks the walk, shows up in person, goes over their financials, their management, their products, their prospects. Hands on, step by step, from the bottom up. Working to deliver for Janice investors. Get there. The Amazing Race Team stormed through Africa. Let's go, let's go! Are the wrestlers so strong yeah. that the others might quit? I can't see! Don't miss the new Amazing Race Tuesday. Good news on both counts. Cadillac Williams, you saw, walked off unassisted, and Daniel Brooks, with some aid, uh, was accompanied over to the bench. And a uh, collision of uh, some magnitude between on the punt return. Uh, Carnell Williams, a great reputation as a punt returner in Tennessee. Knowing that, see Cadillac's mom, very happy to see both guys walk off the field. Here's Campbell, draw play. Ronnie Brown scoots through, spins out to the 20 yard line. Jason, what well, is 80% completion of passes? And just uh, his season has been one that he will remember for his whole life. On second down at the 20, uh, Jason Campbell. Uh, a lot has been made of the relationship he has forged with the offense. He's got a lot of poise. He's six foot five. He runs a four or five. He can throw the ball. And Al Borges was able to help him get over the top from a confidence standpoint more than anything. On third down, pressure comes. He finds Silas Daniels for a first down. Their respective teams. First down and ten. There's a play fake. Campbell comes left. Hauls it out, intended for Ronnie Brown. Contact that is ruled incidental, and uh, Campbell may have uh, put his finger on the helmet there. Pretty good pressure again. Turk McBride getting in there. Also, Tony McDaniel. And got, he got stepped yeah, on. He didn't get hit on a helmet. He got stepped no. on by McDaniel. <laughs> Brings it's, to mind for some of us Christian Leitner and yeah. Amanu Timberlake in Duke, Kentucky basketball. There's a reach. 
You take a look at what Jason Campbell has done and where he's thrown the football. Exasperated as the play clock was down to one. Yeah, he had motion on that play, and the play clock was... 21-7, Auburn, 335 to go before the break. Coming up at the half, the Dr. Pepper throw for Doe. Remember last year? This is Chuck Bartlett from Natchez, Mississippi. That was worth $400,000. And Chuck are here at a private jet. Fly over to Natchez, pick him up, say, come on, be our guest at the, uh, at the SEC championship. Third and seven, ball in the 32. There's the change, play clock down to zero. Didn't get it called. Oh, nah, that's, How can that happen well, out of the timeout? All that is is trying to get a little too tricky, you know, and, uh, and that's a little uncharacteristic for Jason Campbell. They came out of the timeout. They're still a little slow getting out of huddle. It's, it's down to 10 right now. There's the shift. Motion. That's close. They got it. Here's Campbell. Looks deep. Gets a great block. Oh, boy. And that one, Jason Allen. Jason Allen. Jason Allen. No, Jason Allen. No, oh, no. they're going to rule over the back. As he went at Obamanu. We chatted with him and a couple of the other seniors. And he's from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. He said until tonight, he had never played in a championship game at any level. Thus his excitement for this game. On first down, Cornell Wiggins. Knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Well, in the 12th game for the first time ever tonight to finish the season as the SEC champions. First time since 87 to win their first championship game since this uh, game was inaugurated in 92. Here's the pass in the, the middle of the tight end. Yep. Mm. On third down. Third and one. Hand off left side. And Cadillac Williams appears to have moved it. You know, I want to go back and make a comment about that game because I made... Lost the opener. 23 to nothing to USC. Mm -hmm. Lost the next week to Georgia Tech. Tommy Tuberville said the then president of the university decided to run him off at that point. And Tuberville survived and prevailed. Fourth down, they'll go for it. Quarterback keeper. And Jake Slaughter comes up to help him out one more time. Pretty good well, block on Kevin Burnett, wasn't there? He only needed a smidgen. Yes, he did. And he got a and try to throw the ball down the field here right after that play. There's a toss. What a play. Oh, boy. Cadillac Williams. Neither one of these teams play on this kind of a surface at home, but they both played an away game at Old Miss on this exact same surface that they have in the Georgia Dome here. Campbell back. Right side. Caught by Ronnie Brown. And he dives over a man. There is the ball is down. They're calling him high contact. Yes. Corey Campbell picked it up, but they're going to rule Ronnie Brown down. See, this is the other thing with with Ronnie Brown and Carnell Williams. Jason Campbell is able to throw the ball out on little swing passes and let those guys make plays out in space. You saw that replay. Clearly down by contact, and the ball came out once he hit the ground. Twelfth play of this drive. Auburn still has two timeouts left here in the first half. Campbell across the middle, caught. Second down. Oops, pressure. Campbell stays up, throws it. Oh, it's incomplete. Good pressure by Mahalona. I mean, he... Uh, he can be a very disruptive force on the inside when he's got it going. And he was able to force Jason Campbell to leave the pocket and then basically throw it away. Carlton Neal was the second guy there, but it was Mahalona's early pressure that forced Campbell out of the pocket. Uh, Jesse Mahalona sprints off on third down. Let's see if Tennessee goes with three down linemen. They will. Omar Gaither. Kevin Burnett, the two linebackers. And if you're Tennessee right now, you better be very wary of Jason Campbell tucking it and running it also in this situation for the first down. Third and four. Total domination by Auburn. The one Tennessee touchdown, the result of a very short field after 
A bobbled punt snap by Cody Bliss. They got a touchdown to make it 14-7 at that time. Here's Campbell rolling right. Kevin Burnett chases. Campbell, watch out. And he runs into the Tennessee bench. You know, we, we talked about that number of the total domination. But if the Tennessee defense can somehow hold them here, even though they've been dominated, and go down into the locker room only 21-7, they got to feel pretty decent about themselves in the second half. Good job by Kevin Burnett chasing that play all the way from the backside and forcing Campbell out of bounds. Fourth and six, and apparently they will uh, eschew the field goal. I don't know about this. I, I would try the field goal here and try to put more points on the board. John Vaughn, season long, is 43. But you're indoors. I mean, this is the perfect conditions to kick the football. Yeah, this is a bit of a surprise. Campbell up. Campbell deep. Campbell first down. Good decision. It wasn't it a great decision? Yeah, perfect decision. Now they'll use... Well, he's got 13 seconds and one timeout, so he can certainly take one good shot at the end zone and then go to the field goal. If it happens quick this first play, he might be able to take two shots. I mean, I don't think he needs to try to get any closer for the field goal. At this point, try for the touchdown. If you don't get that, then settle for three from John Vaughn. One play for sure, possibly two. Ronnie Brown is in motion going to the right side. Two wide outs to the left. Here's Campbell back. Good protection down the middle, almost intercepted. It is. it is. It was picked off in the end zone on the deflection. Corey Campbell gets the pick. That's only the sixth interception of the season for Jason Campbell. And it's another Campbell who gets the interception. I think he was going for Ronnie Brown. Take a look at this. I think this receiver here is going to the middle. They get the back in here, and it's just a good job of the Tennessee defense squeezing those inside receivers. Courtney Taylor, the ball is tipped by Omar Gaither, number 44, and once that ball gets tipped up into the air, you know, a lot of things can happen. Burnett got a hand on it, and Corey Campbell came away with the interception. Well, with memories of the Notre Dame debacle and Eric Ainge's injury on the final play of the first half, perhaps... A big momentum swinger for Tennessee. Philip Fulmer's team down by 14. Tennessee will get the ball when we come back for the second half, and they should have some momentum to start that second half after that defensive stop. That's a look of chagrin on Tommy Tuberville's face. I think he's thinking what might have been. Mm -hmm. Let's go down to Tracy, who is with Philip Fulmer. Thanks, Vern. Coach, a big stop there, but Jason Campbell getting it done on the ground, in the air. What do you need to do to slow down this Auburn offense? Keep him off the field a little bit with our offense. You know, we haven't done anything offensively. I don't think we've had 20 plays of offense or so. They've done an incredible job, and, you know, maybe we'll wear them out. You know, I don't know, we, but we've got to play better in the second half. You know, the first five minutes, we come out and make something happen, we got a chance. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Tracy, thank you. That's the end of the first half with a score 21-7. We'll be back with the Dr. Pepper throw for dough after these messages. Would you believe about... If a moonlit moment... 21-7 at the half, the 2004 SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. The Amazing Race is taking America by storm. As teams journey across continents, there. Just a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson had a chance to chat with Auburn coach Tom Tuberville. Coach, a big turnover heading into the half. How do you keep the momentum from swinging back their way? Well, we were on worst enemy on that last drive. We missed some blocks. Should have had the ball down there a little bit quicker than having to try to force one in with 13 seconds. But, uh, you know, we played well defensively. Can't play much better than we played there. We're getting ready to probably see some deep balls, and you know they're going to try to get back in the game early. We just got to play sound, fundamental defense, and see what happens. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, Tracy. Thank you. Jason Campbell had the hot hand in the first 30 minutes. Smokey hoping to lead a comeback for the Volunteers. We'll be right back. Tonight, tonight. 
We are set for the start of the third quarter. They do do this one right, the Southeastern Conference Championship. It is really a celebration of the sport in this part of the country, and folks here have a passion for college football that I think is unique yeah, uh, to the culture in the South. People declare their allegiance early on. It lasts for a lifetime, and then you follow your team, and you live and die with them. Philip Yost will kick off as Tennessee will receive to open the third quarter. Here's Yost, and he chases Riggs way to the right. Out of bounds, it will come out to the 20. And the Volunteers, who had uh, a total of 20 <laughs> plays and 39 yards of offense in the first half, what do they do? Well, I think they've got to try to throw the football, and I think they've got to try to throw on early downs. Uh, it's tough for them. They were one of five on third downs in that first half. Auburn very good when they get you in third and seven plus. So I think Tennessee has to come out and throw on early downs. Try to get Rick Clawson in a little bit of a rhythm. I don't think they abandon the run completely, but if they throw with some success, that'll help their running game. Well, they've got a first down and 10 at the 20 yard line. Trailing by 14. Out of the spread. Play fake. Clawson still has it. He's being chased by McGlover, and the pass is caught up at the 30-yard line by Tony Brown. And let's break it down statistically for you. The first half stats presented by Dr. Pepper. Well, everything in favor of Auburn, starting with the score and ending with the time of possession. I mean, they totally dominated. Look at that total yards, 303 to 39, but they got a first down on the first play here to the third quarter, and they threw the football, and... Uh, Again, for Rick Clawson, anything to get in a little bit of a rhythm. If you can stretch this defense a little, that will open up some creases to run the football. First down and 10. They fake the reverse. The handoff goes to Riggs. He darts into the secondary. It's Houston. A flag is down. It's 21 instead of 31. We'll see if the score stands. 70 yards if it stands well, but it's coming back yeah, where that flag was thrown i think they are going to get a an outside possibly a receiver blocking but it was an excellent cutback by cedric houston and the fake reverse helped that play significantly you, know, you wonder why does a team run a fake reverse like During that number 14 on the offense 10 yard penalty from no. the bottom of the foul it was not 14 it was holding on 14 carlos rogers is number 14 he's the guy that was held i think it was chris hannon number 13 who was the guilty guy of holding chris hannon the receiver gets a hold of carlos rogers and it's so unnecessary because all he's got to do is just be a gnat you know just kind of stand there in his way and screen him away from cedric houston and tennessee has a touchdown it becomes an 11-yard run after the penalty is walked off and results in a first down and six and a glare from Philip Fulmer. Oh, boy. What an electrifying way it would have been. For uh, Tennessee. And just like Philip said, if we can do something in the first five minutes here of the second half, we'll have a chance. As you look at what they did in the first half, other than that one where they got the fumbled snap on the punt, they did nothing offensively. But they got a completion on first down, and they broke a big one on their next play, only to have it called back for the holding. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Results in a first down and six for Tennessee. Draw play, left side. Another big hole. It's Riggs, number 31, and he gets all the way to the 50-yard line. Well, we've seen a couple different runs. They fake the reverse the time before that. This time, it's the old counter trap. They pull the backside guard and tackle. Watch these guys come, the fullback and the guard, and they're going to get a nice play. It's the guard and the fullback, and they kick out, 
And there's just a huge hole right in there for Gerald Riggs. That's a gain of 15, the longest run of the game. Here's Clawson getting it in the hands of Riggs. He goes right and ran up the back of his tackle. Travis Williams, number 51, defensively for the Auburn Tigers. And one of the guys that's in the game right now for Tennessee is Cody Douglas, who uh, was the starting right guard, has not practiced for a month. He injured his foot in the Georgia game. He has not practiced at all for a month. He, they thought he might get some plays in today, and he's in there right now at the right guard. And he had Riggs running up his back on that last play. Second down. Here's Rick Clawson. Third string quarterback to start the year. Behind him is C.J. Lee. Play clock's at three. He's not going to get this one off. And just does. No, he no, did, not. did not. Wiped out by a penalty on Chris Hannon. That negated the touchdown. Now they have a big first down and followed by another penalty. And right now, Rick Lawson's got to be just thinking, let's just get a good play, a positive play here, so we can get at least half of this yardage back on this second down play. Gerald Riggs, the deep back, play fake, Clawson, bumps, he's nailed as he lets it go, and it's incomplete. Intended for C.J. Faton. Boy, Clawson really got belted. Yeah, he was hit by Quentin Groves, who is uh, one of the two young defensive ends on this team, along with Stanley McGlover, that both have seven and a half sacks. Groves came from the backside and uh, really laid it on Rick Clawson. But the, this Auburn defense, they have two youngsters that are their best pass rushers, and they, they bring them in in certain role situations to rush the passer, and they're both extremely fast. McGlover and Groves each have seven and a half sacks for the season. It's third and 12. Clawson on third down, yet to complete a pass. Looks over at Randy Sanders again. Pulls up, lets it go, inside, bobbled. Now well, that's two now we've seen. Yep. That was Brett Smith. 42 and a half. Boy, what a change of events. They have the touchdown run and, and a penalty that really didn't have to occur. It didn't affect the outcome of the play. Nice and high for Colquitt. He's had a very effective night and has negated Carnell Williams' ability yes, to has. return punts. He sure has. He's done a nice job. That was a beauty. But, oh, what might have been for Tennessee, Philip Fulmer telling Tracy Wolfson as they came back on the field, or as they left the field, we need to do something in the first five minutes. Didn't happen yet. in the fourth quarter against Mississippi State, T. Martin found Peerless Price for a 41-yard touchdown to put the balls up by three. The Bulldogs fumbled on the next possession. Then on the very next play, it was T. Martin again throwing 26 yards for Cedric Wilson and another score. The balls celebrated their second straight SEC title on their way to a victory in the Fiesta Bowl and a national championship. Not to the sideline specifically Brett Smith Rick Clawson trying to keep his guys positive Gerald Riggs running up and down saying keep your head in the game all right Tracy thank you and uh, pictures do tell a big story don't a lot they? of football left and that guy has made a lot of big plays catching the football for this Tennessee offense this year so no reason to get down at this point second, everybody drops ball second down and four Here's Campbell on the keeper after the oh, oh, oh. Yep, that's a ball. Oh. Turk McBride, number 90. This is not an Auburn team that gives it up a lot. They were plus six in turnovers coming in. That's only the eighth fumble they've lost all season long. Well, we said Jason Campbell has not run the ball much this season, and we've seen him run more tonight than we've seen all year. Again, a designed quarterback run, and I think Mahalona was there first, and Kevin Burnett is the guy who made the hit that knocked the ball loose, and Turk McBride came up with it. Burnett with a big hit right on the football, and Turk McBride has Tennessee right back in the red zone. Ball at the 20. They went 14 for their only touchdown of the ball game. That followed a bobbled snap. 
So three turnovers by Auburn tonight. Here's the first down rumble, and it's inside the 15-yard line. Cedric Houston, number 21. I made this point earlier on the touchdown run that got called back. We've seen Tennessee now fake this reverse, and the reason you do that is because that reverse is going to hold these defenders just a little bit and allow you to run the ball inside. Watch the fake reverse affect the outside defenders for Auburn. It holds them just an instant and keeps them away from the play. Second down and five. Jason Swain is wide to the right. C.J. Faiton split off to the left. And a little confusion now. Anderson gets the play. Two on the play clock. And they get the snap. Here's Houston coming left, and he is stiffened. Travis Williams, number 51, was the first man there. And then T.J. Jackson, number 58, was also a I, part of the tackle. I know Tennessee prides themselves on being tough and, and always being able to run the football. And they did have the long run called back. But this is the best run defensive football team in the conference. Coming into tonight's game, Auburn only allowing 95 yards a game rushing. And they shut down Tennessee in the first half running the football, but Tennessee coming out with a couple different looks here in the second half has hit a couple runs on them. Hannon split off wide right on third down. That's the tight end, Chris Brown. Here's Clawson with a play fake, looking for Hannon all the way in the end zone. Justin Reed, what a catch. Whoa, it's Reed. Oh, there's a late flag, too. A very late flag. Read the tight end. This, well, I don't know what this is. I'm not even going to speculate. Unless, you know what this is? This is an illegal lineman downfield. Albert Tawina was way downfield when this ball was thrown. Yep. There it is. And that's going to negate a tremendous effort by both Rick Clawson and particularly Justin Reed. Now think about this. We played just a second more than five minutes. Number 72 of the offense was illegally downfield and passed. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. And Philip Fulmer saying as they went to the locker room, if in the five minutes, yeah. they've had a touchdown of 70 yards wiped out. They had a drop pass from Brett Smith, and now this. Well, here's Tawina right here. And even though it's a bootleg, he's still got to stay behind. He ends up way down here. I mean, he just uh, he got discombobulated and, and started going downfield looking for a block. And that wiped out the play. On third and eight, here's Clawson. He's got a man open. Oh, man. Hard touchdown. And they Robert Meacham. They got it on Carlos Rogers, too. The best cover corner on the team. They really fooled him on that one. I don't think they were expecting Tennessee to throw right there. And uh, they went right at Carlos Rogers. Casey Clawson with the applause. Rick Clawson's dad, Jim, very quiet. At a certain degree of equanimity, and his daughter Katie just to his right. Mom Kathy is also part of it. The whole family from Thousand Oaks, California. His son Rick. And this one from Will Hoyt is up and good. And Robert Meacham, who had a huge game against Kentucky with five catches for 143 yards, gets the touchdown and cuts the margin to seven. And say something about the mental toughness of this Tennessee football team to overcome the penalties to overcome what looked like missed opportunities, all of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. It strikes me that it's a good thing there's not instant replay. Did you see that ball? It may have hit the ground. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship Game, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Diet Dr. Pepper. Thank you for... Georgia Dome in Atlanta, sellout of 74,000 plus. Tennessee cuts the margin to seven. Robert Meacham, and uh, the catch made very close to the ground. Take another look at just a moment. Now, Will Hoyt will kick off. Cadillac Williams and Devin Aroma Shadu are deep. This one, returnable. Williams at the one. Oh, boy. Cut down at the 13-yard line by Casey Larkins, a one-time running back. Corey Larkins, beg your pardon. 
Well, let's go back and look at the touchdown catch by Meacham on the post route. Now, he's going to come from this part of the field, but the key is Will Herring, the safety, gets caught hung up in here looking at the quarterback, Rick Clawson, and doesn't help on the post route. He's late to make any kind of a move. That left a wide open Meacham, and it was a low throw. But I think Meacham got his arm underneath the ball quickly because it, there was no bounce or bobble when he came up with it. First down, here's Campbell. Fakes the draw play, comes right side. Man wide open, it's Courtney Taylor again. And game. that's his fourth catch for 104 yards in this game. 19 on that play. Play fake, Campbell, right side, tight end. That's Cooper Wallace, the tight end, and uh, Hefney make 14. Nine minutes in the third quarter. I mean, we still yeah. we got a lot of football left to play. And, uh, boy, I'm just impressed with Tennessee, you know, overcoming those mistakes, their first possession, and having the big long touchdown run called back and to, to get another big turnover and then capitalize. Their two touchdown drives have been for 14 and 19 yards, so they've taken advantage of the Auburn mistakes. By the shovel play, it was covered. Here's Campbell being chased and run out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. And uh, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Vernon defensive tackle Jesse Mahalona is out right now because of cramping. Trainers say they're giving him tons of salt and tons of Gatorade to try and prevent those cramps. They do expect him to return, though. All right, thank you, Tracy. Three tackles tonight. He'll... Uh, Look on now as his defensive teammates confront an Auburn team that looks at a third and three. They've been uh, all but unstoppable on third and five or less. Tennessee looks really confused on this defensive set. They, they've got guys pointing all over the place. Campbell half roll to his right. Now he's chased and he has to throw it away. Oh, a late hit on Paris Harrelson or a hit to the head. I mean, Campbell is throwing the ball away, and they're saying Harrelson hit him in the head. Totally unnecessary penalty because they had the play defended and stopped and would have gotten the football. Boy, have penalties been crucial against Tennessee here to start the second half. Personal foul, roughing the pass for number 98. Remember, we saw these two guys jawing at each other early in the game. They're both Mississippi guys. And Harrelson, I mean, just run by him. The play's over. You know he's throwing it away. And he lowered his head and, and went right into the face of Jason Campbell. I mean, you've got to make that call. I mean, the fans boo, but that's a no-brainer. Penalties in this half. Four for 35. One of them. Wiped out a 70-yard touchdown run. That one wiped out what it would have been a punt. And here's Campbell. Omar Gaither. The first sack, but I'll tell you one thing. That's the first sack that Tennessee has gotten on Jason Campbell, but it is not the first time they've knocked him down. Now, he's run it a few times, so they've tackled him, but they've knocked him down after he's thrown the ball several times in this ball game already. Omar Gaither right here, he's going to beat the block of Carnell Williams, just overpowers Carnell, and then throws him aside and gets the sack from the backside. Great individual effort by the linebacker, Omar Gaither. Loss of five, second and 15, with seven and a half to go third quarter. Mahalona back on the field. Here comes a four-man rush. Williams comes right. Good pursuit defensively. It'll be third and 12. Very good. Hefty and Mitchell on that tackle. And one thing that you're seeing, even though they've had a couple penalties, I think Tennessee is tackling better here so far in the third quarter. I mean, in that first half, when they gave up over 300 yards, they had 16 missed tackles in the first half of play. They, they seem to be doing a much better job so far in the second half of tackling the guy with the ball. Third and 14, and Jason Campbell says to Steve Landis, we need a timeout.
Tennessee trails, but only by a touchdown. Unusual reason for the Auburn timeout. Back on the roughing the passer penalty, uh, Campbell lost the, the list of plays that he wears on his left wrist. And uh, didn't realize it till he looked down at yeah, the see, line of yeah, scrimmage. See, there's a little piece of paper right yeah. there that's flying out of that wristband, and that's when he went to look at it on that third down play. He said, wait a minute. I don't have the plays here. So he got the thing back. And now on third and 14, Campbell is back. Fires for the short receiver. And that's a Roma should do and a three-man gang tackle led by Jason Allen. And there's going to be a holding on Auburn as well, right in the middle of that pocket, which Tennessee will probably declare. interview in 19 years you've got to hear what he's got to say Sunday on 60 minutes I don't know if you'll understand it I used to listen to some of his music never understood anything he said <laughs> I never knew what he was singing well you were listening to Paul Lind I like Paul Lind he was fun This is great. I get two Tim Brandos tonight <laughs> and a Bob Dylan. And I am so happy that uh, Steve Spurrier is back in the conference for any number of reasons, not the least of which is hearing you do your dead-on impression of him. Well, hopefully, early next September in Athens, Georgia, I'll be doing my impersonation. South Carolina will play at the University of Georgia on September 10th. That'll be his first SEC game again. Yeah, the looks are a little longer like the, the dreadlocks. First down and 10. Rick Clawson under Jason Restford, his center. 10-point game, 11.45 to go. The handoff, Riggs again. Big hole. There's Bill Herring who gets juked out of the way. Junior Rose Green saves the touchdown. Now, Will Herring has had a good season this year as the starting free safety. He has not had a good night tonight for this Auburn defense. He has missed a lot of big tackles. Here's Herring right here. Again, good blocking by Tennessee. It's the counter trap. They bring the guard and the fullback again. Good block by the wide receiver. Now here's Herring, unblocked, and just can't make the tackle. And that ends up being about 15 to 20 more yards before Junior Rosegreen can knock him out of bounds. Gerald Rigg tacks a 54-yard run onto an earlier 80-yard touchdown walk. First down and 10 at the 26. Right side. This is Cedric Houston for a couple. Outside zone play against an eight-man front. Auburn trying to drop a safety down late to get an extra guy in the in the run defense. You look at Gerald Riggs' night tonight. Career high, 165 yards. He was the guy who scored the winning touchdown last week against Kentucky with 38 seconds left. He'd love to do that again tonight on a much bigger stage. After the game of two, second and eight. Crossing play fake. Goes deep, man wide open, sliding catch, oh, Tony Brown. If he hits him in stride, he walks into the end zone. Rick Clawson does a good job of reading the coverage. It's only a two-man round. They kept both backs in, and they released two receivers. And if he hits him on the move, Tony Brown turns that up and goes right to the corner of the end zone for six. See, he's had at least one reception in all 12 games. Now Swain and Brown go wide to the left. Faton and Hannon are wide right. And this is going to be a run here. Spread them out and try to run the football with Riggs. Well, play fake instead. Into the end zone. He overthrows C.J. Faton, number 17. Second down. I thought there might have been a little push by Will Herring on that play. He was the guy in coverage. The ball was thrown high. 
Well, again, you got to admire the resolve of this Tennessee football team. And I talked to Philip Fulmer before the game, and he, he said, I, I think we're going to play well. I think our guys feel very challenged. Nobody's given them much of a chance in this ball game, and they have proved that they belong here, here in the second half particularly. Here's Riggs, dances left, touchdown Tennessee. They do personify resiliency, don't they? The Volunteers are within four. Second touchdown for Riggs, the nine-yarder, complement the earlier effort of 80 yards. And here's Will Hoyt for the extra point. Snap a little high, but a fine hole by John Henderson. The kick is good. Tennessee back to within three. With Gerald Riggs, only eight carries, but he's been effective. 174 yards and two touchdowns. And Tennessee back within three. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship Game, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Dr. 10.07 to go in the ball game, 31-28. Tennessee climbs back to within three. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. The three rushing touchdowns by the Volunteers tonight ties an SEC Championship Game record. That is the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com. Not only that, but keep in mind that this Auburn team had given up one rushing touchdown in 53 quarters yeah. coming into this ball game. And the run defense has been shredded, particularly in the second half by the Volunteers. Here's the kick. Cadillac Williams will take it. It'll be a touchback. Let's go back and look at the touchdown and watch the block of the left tackle, Aaron Sears. He's going to get a block on McGlover, the guard, and the fullback are going to pick up Didi, the linebacker. Now, I know his parents are going to think I'm picking on Will Herring. I'm really not. But, again, he's going to be unblocked on this play, but unable to make the tackle on Riggs before Riggs can get to the end zone. And, uh, you know, we should mention also they run behind big Aaron Sears, and they've gotten some big plays running behind him. The one guy we haven't even mentioned his name tonight, Michael Munoz, right. not even here. He injured his shoulder in the Vanderbilt game, did not play last week, had surgery yesterday. And so Aaron Sears is in there at left tackle instead of the All-American, and they're running the ball well right now. Here's Campbell with the play fake, steps up, lobs it. It's caught at the 25-yard line by Cadillac Williams, and Rashawn Fellows makes the stop. As a matter of fact, Michael Munoz, one of two from the SEC who will be honored at the uh, National Football Foundation Hall of Fame dinner in New York on Tuesday night. And our congratulations to Michael Munoz and David Green, the uh, Georgia quarterback. And Munoz, the son of Anthony Munoz, named first team in the Coaches All-America team. Fifth-year senior from Mason, Ohio. Second down and four. Campbell out of the spread. 31-28 with nine... 24 to go. Campbell, designed quarterback draw, nothing doing. It's going to be third down. And Omar Gaither came on the blitz on the outside and was just had a direct beat on that play. When you call that play, you're not expecting an outside blitz. And that time, uh, Omar Gaither came in unblocked from the outside and, and stopped that play for very short yardage. Third and five. Nine minutes to go. Three-point game. I would say this is a very big conversion attempt for the Auburn offense. Look at that. 17 tackles by wow. Omar Gaither. We thought we might see him at strong safety. John Javis has made a good decision to keep him at linebacker. Brown in motion on third and five. Four-person rush. Here's the pass. Caught up the 30-yard line. That's going to be enough yep. for a first down. Courtney Taylor again. And again, he has been so effective on third down. And when they needed big catches, he knew what he needed for the first down. He got beyond the first down marker and then secured the catch. That's six receptions for 111 yards tonight. Look at that, 26 first downs. 
And it's a three-point game. It's an SEC championship game record. And here are flags down. Yeah, Turk McBride jumped off sides. Again, that's one of those cases where a, a defensive tackle who's lined up six inches from the football listens to the quarterback's voice instead of watching the football. Fourth ball was snapped. Number 90 of the defense made contact. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, how's uh, Jason Campbell done tonight? <laughs> Not lost his accuracy throwing the football. Handoff. Bounce it outside as Cadillac Williams gets a good block from the tight end. Cooper Wallace, and he crosses the 50. Another first down. That's a gain of 16. All that Auburn is doing is eating up Yes. Clock. I mean, uh, they'd love to get more points, but it's just as important for them to eat time off the clock with this drive. High formation. Williams behind Slaughter in the backfield. And, oh, what a change of direction by Carnell Burnett makes the tackle number two. You know, if there's one big difference between Ronnie Brown and Carnell Williams, it's that Ronnie Brown is kind of a more guy who's going to pound you, and Carnell's going to make you miss a little bit more. Look at those three sharp cuts. I mean, just changing direction inside the hole and gaining a couple extra yards. He's not, he's about 20 pounds lighter than Ronnie Brown, but maybe a little quicker and uh, able to make people miss a little bit more. Well, what was wrong with that? Here's Campbell going deep for Obamanu, and there's Obamanu, and there is a touchdown. Well, there was movement, but I, I think it might have been offsides on Tennessee. Flag is at the 43-yard line. Yeah, there was movement at the line of scrimmage, but I think it was offsides, and Auburn stayed with the play and got the touchdown. Jason Campbell. My goodness. They got Turk McBride again, number 90. He's the one who was offsides earlier, just didn't get back out of the neutral zone. Now, he quit on the play. He stayed on his knee. Jason Campbell went ahead and ran the play and threw the touchdown to Obamanu. Hmm. Obamanu, Campbell. Here's Vaughn with the extra point. Well, when Jason Campbell goes beyond 300 yards for the first time in his career, he really goes beyond. <laughs> 374 yards for the senior, the son of a high school football coach. Jason Campbell, Taylorsville, Mississippi. by Jason Campbell. Now watch when McBride jumps off sides here. Watch the rest of the Tennessee defense just kind of stop thinking the play was over. They all stop and Ben Albamanu keeps running the route. He runs right past Rashawn Fellows. Jason Campbell doesn't stop and they get a touchdown. The Tennessee players for whatever reason thought the play was done. Thought he made contact. Thought the play was ruled dead. The official didn't see it that way and uh Touchdown for Auburn. See, well, I think what Turk is thinking is that he made contact and it should have been a blown dead, but uh, I didn't see him make contact, and neither did Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell in the record book, 431 yards. That's out of a total of Auburn's 523. And the kick sends Riggs back nine yards deep. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Now well, the lineup for America's most watched network. First and ten, Rick Lawson. There you see the total for Auburn. That is an SEC championship game record. This is Gerald Riggs. Well, Auburn trying to schedule his ranked ninth, and that despite the fact that they played Louisiana Tech, the Citadel, here's a run up the middle, and Louisiana Monroe. I think you should also point out, though, that if they win tonight, as Tommy Tuberville was quick to mention to us, they will have defeated four teams with nine victories. Now, one of those teams is Tennessee that they've beaten twice. But when they won their signature victories this year,
against LSU, against Tennessee, against Georgia, right. all three at the time were ranked in the top ten. First down and ten. McClure goes to the left side. They try to fake reverse and hand it off, and this time Auburn is ready for it. Now, I, I know that they're only down ten, but I don't know how many times Tennessee can continue to just run the football with five minutes and 45 seconds now left in the ball game. I think they've got to get a few more bigger plays, attempt to get some bigger plays throwing the football because the clock is working against them now, even though it's just a 10-point ball game. Lawson's numbers rather modest, 7 of 18 for 64 yards. Second and seven here. They hand it off to Riggs. He's hit behind the line, breaks the initial tackle of Quentin Groves, and uh, is stopped. It'll be third down now. There's Groves, number 54. Nearing the five-minute mark, Auburn by 10. Third and seven. Crowd of just under 75,000. Nobody's left. This play fairly meaningful. Yeah, they got to call timeout. Randy Sanders said call time. Rick Lawson did. And here's Randy and Trooper Taylor. They look like they were doing jumping jacks. Instead, they got the timeout. They want to talk about this very important third down play. 439 remaining. The margin of difference is 10. Game is complete. Third and seven. Now, this could be the volunteer season. If they don't convert here, very close to lights out. Auburn's coming with the blitz. Carlos Rogers, pass near side. Brett Smith, hit twice, hit three times, down short. And I don't think they've got much choice but to go for it here. What do you think? Well, yeah, I think they have to at this point. I mean, they, they got some of the yardage. There's third and seven. There's a blitz coming from the outside. Carlos Rogers, but it's picked up. And then Brett Smith trying to fight for extra yardage, and you see the speed. That was a defensive lineman. That was T.J. Jackson, number 58, who ran out there from his inside tackle position to make the tackle. Fourth and three. Balls go for it. At their own 44, down by 10, less than four to play. And Randy Sanders calling this play from the sideline. You saw Rick Clawson look over. Get the check. Communicate it to the rest of the team. Here comes the corner blitz again. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Brown. They had the, bit, the blitz beat. If they have an accurate throw, they get the conversion. Again, this is only Rick Clawson's third game that he started. At times he's been accurate, at times he's not been accurate. This one, he could have thrown better. Well, what a, an effort by Philip Fulmer's team. I, I'm impressed with what they've done. And I've been impressed with this team all season long. They are now three minutes and 43 seconds away from becoming the first team in the history of football at Auburn University to win 12 games. Hand off, Cadillac Williams. How's that for a championship run? To the 35-yard line. Cadillac Williams darts through inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Here's Auburn Tigers' SEC championship season. You see 89, 10, and 2. 88, 10 and 2. Yeah, and this one here, 87, is the last time they won it outright, which if they win here tonight, that, that'll be an outright championship. Time has been called by Tennessee. That leaves them with one. Auburn by 10. Go! 
back in Atlanta. Let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim. Here is Rod Bramlett of the Auburn Radio Network. That much needed short yardage play. You see, Tommy Tuberville says that should do it. Had a chance to go to Auburn on Wednesday of this week and uh, watch them practice again. I've just loved the focus of the team the whole season. They're just taking one game at a time all year. No chance to go. Here's first down. Running play. Williams breaks the tackle. Inside the 20. Another first down. In Tennessee right now maybe trying to strip the ball and trying to tackle the football and that's hard to do against Carnell Williams. You better tackle him because uh, he breaks a lot of tackles and if you're in there reaching for the football and not wrapping him up, he's just going to run right through you and that's what he did on that play. That is an even 100 yards on 19 carries for Carnell Williams. 38-28, 143 to go. The Auburn Tigers were tied by Tennessee, 21 all. Jason Campbell threw for a touchdown to Aroma Shadu to reestablish the lead. It got back to within three. It's now 10 with 90 seconds to play. Left side. Ronnie Brown, another of the seniors, to the 16-yard line. Well... Tom Tuberville said, I can't imagine a team going undefeated for the season and through the SEC and winning the SEC championship and not getting a chance to play for the national championship. My guess is that's what's going to happen. Yeah. USC won again today. Oklahoma winning big at the break. This is an Auburn team that was ranked 17th in the preseason polls, while USC and Oklahoma were ranked one and two. It would appear they're going to wind up third. Ronnie Brown. Well, I still think that the SEC, even though it may be a little bit down this year, is still the best conference in college football and the toughest to win, particularly on the road in the conference. And to go undefeated in this league, that is very, very special. Last loss for this Auburn team was against Georgia last year. It was then that a plane took off and flew to Louisville. Four men on that plane. They offered Bobby Petrino this man's job. Tommy Tuberville came back. The team defeated Alabama. He said he thought he was gone until that victory. And then with a, a great degree of class, he said he wanted to stay on. I'm not sure what these guys Well, they doing. headed to the locker room. The only problem, they went to the wrong locker room. Now they're just, they're running all over the place. Oh, they're going to get the flag and the cheer, but more power to them. What a great, great season for the Auburn Tiger football team. And what a season for that guy right there, Jason Campbell. No quarterback has played better than him all season in college football. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Vern. Coach, after everything that happened last year, now an SEC championship victory, a 12-0 perfect season. Have you made your case for a national championship? Well, we'll we, we played good tonight. I tell you, Tennessee came to play in the second half. They, they caught us doing some things that uh, we hadn't done all year long, but I don't know. We won't care about the national championship right now. We're going to savor this moment, 12-0, first time ever in Auburn history. One reason because this guy's standing right over next to us. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, our player of the game, <laughs> Jason Campbell. Look at those gaudy stats. 27 of 35, 374 yards, three touchdowns. And he leads his team to an unblemished season, 12 and 0. The final 38-28 coming up next in CIS. For Tracy Wilson, Todd Blackledge, I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from the Georgia Dome, where the Auburn Tigers win it by 10.